Good morning, everyone. We are continuing here in the words of the Beis HaLevi as he's describing to us why flattery is such a bad thing. And he's still building up the background information that we can get to the answer of his question. Aval harasha, but a wicked person, he certainly follows after his nature, and the weakness of his heart, and the desires that are tied up together with his teva, with his nature. And certainly, he would never act against his nature and his will. And since that we find that the evil impulses that people have are very distinct one from the other, you will not find within one person a variant of evil impulses. As it says in Tehillim, dispersed will be the evildoers. Why? Because they are distinct one from the other. Meaning, even if you have a Russia, a wicked, as he's going to explain, you have a person who's wicked in one area, it doesn't mean he's going to be wicked in another area of his life. And if this person is wicked in one area, it doesn't mean that they will be wicked in another area of their lives either. Everything goes according to the way that the nature of a person is divided up. One person is drawn after a particular chet, a sin, and somebody else is drawn after another sin. And they could be opposite each other. Meaning, for example, one person, let's say, is drawn after the sin of stealing from other people. So he has no problem breaking into homes, breaking into stores, knocking the old lady down, and taking her purse. That's one person. You have another person, his wickedness is he has illicit relations. He cheats on his wife. He has no problem. He'll go, he'll find somebody, he'll cheat and do what he wants in an adulterous affair. But says the Beis HaLevi, the one that's committing adultery is not going to become a goslin, he won't become a thief. And the one that's a goslin, that's a thief, he won't become an adulterer because their nature of rishas, of evil, is somewhat located and relegated to a certain area. Let's see how this works out. And therefore, if you have a person whose nature is to be argumentative, and he's always causing fights with other people, who he's going to be very distant from flattering somebody else. And so to someone who by nature is a flatterer, that's his wickedness, he flatters people. So he's going to be very distant from causing arguments and fights and the like and having hatred for other people. The two things don't exist. And it's known, this statement that is said in the name of the Velt, the world says, it's not very easy to find someone who will hit his friend because he flatters him. The two things do not go hand in hand. Now, even though that this person himself hates the trait of Hanifa flattery, nevertheless, he's not going to start an argument he is not going to start an argument with him because if he does, that would flatter him. Meaning the fact that I am apparently paying attention to this person over here and I'm starting up with him so then the person knows that I've taken notice of him. Just being taken notice of sometimes is a sign of flattery. And therefore, if I am a person that is steeped in the sin of of flattering somebody else, I certainly am not going to be the one that goes and begins a mariva, a fight with somebody, because that itself would be a show of flattery. The Beis HaLevi is telling us over here that in the mind of the wicked person or in the chemical, bio, physiological makeup of the wicked person, he can only be wicked in one area and other areas of wickedness will end up being a contradiction to who he is. 
So he's only going to go according to his teva, according to his nature, and not beyond that. Okay, what is it? Now we're already mentioning the word chanufa, of flattery, and therefore Be'ez Hashem, as we continue, we'll see where the Beis Levi is going with these words. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful Shabbos.